It's approaching spring, the weather is warming up, the sun is beginning to shine and I'm starting to create feminine floaty dresses. Today I'm going to be drafting a spring dress and then I will be sewing it with this lovely pink linen from Minerva.com. I will place the link in the description. I ordered 3 meters of milled washed 100% linen fabric in light pink at $13.99 per meter. It's 150 centimeters wide and it described itself as a medium weight. For lining, I will use a simple cotton lawn. I pre-wash both fabrics in my regular washing cycle. That is what I'm going to wash the end clothes in, so that is what I pre-wash them in. I then left them on the line to dry. If you use a tumble dryer, I recommend tumble drying to avoid any shrinkage in the end garment. Finally, I gave the fabric a press with my iron to smooth out any wrinkles. To begin to draft my pattern, I did some sketching and came up with the following design. It is a princess seam with a straight neckline and bishop sleeves with a cuff. The skirt will be super full and tiered, it will have pockets and it will fasten in the side seam under the arm with an invisible zipper. I want to do it as two garments, the skirt separate from the bodice so that I can wear the items separate and together. To begin, I traced the bodice sections of a previous pattern I had created last year from my basic block. It was similar with the princess seams on the front. I removed the overlap as the front was a button up originally, setting the centre front line back in. I measured how low I wanted the neckline, marked this with a straight line. As this point was lower than the original top notch, I marked this point again for sewing. For the front side, I straightened the line to the shoulder. The back was a bigger change though. I had to separate it into two parts. For the side back, I measured the shoulder on the front side and matched this on the side back shoulder. I then drew a line from this point down to the bottom dart. For the centre back, I measured the height where my bra fell and placed it above this line. When drafting, remember to mark all notches on, fold grain lines and label each pattern piece before you cut anything out. Once happy, I added a one centre seam allowance to every part. I usually work with a 1.5 centimetre as it gives you more fabric to make adjustments with, but I knew this was going to be a little tight on my three metres of fabric. For the back I had to cut two parts and then add extra paper to add the seam alliance on the former join line. I find masking tape is better than regular clear tape as it's easier to draw over after. I cut out a toil to check the fit from some old cheap fabric. The first thing that is obvious is the neckline is too low. I marked the point I wanted it to reach with a pin. Secondly, there is some bagging at the shoulders. It's too loose and I think the issue is there is too much fabric in the back. I pinched the excess out of the back only and used pins to hold it in place. See how it sits now and doesn't gape compared to the other side. The final adjustment I made was to account for my sway back. If you have a centre back seam you can take the extra out here 
I don't, so I'll transfer the extra evenly between the two seams here, taking it from the centre back pattern only. Satisfied with the fit, I measured the adjustments made on the cloth and transferred them onto the pattern. To check, I also changed the toil to match and sewed it up properly. Obviously, I couldn't do this for the neckline as this was adding fabric, but I didn't need to see that now to be sure. As you can see, it's much better. I'm not happy with the shoulder back still, but I'm actually not going to adjust this anymore because I actually think once I add the sleeves, I'll need to change the back design anyway as it won't stay up. As I had taken two centimeters out of the shoulder back, I would normally have to draft a fresh sleeve. However, I want volume in the top of the sleeve in addition to it being a bishop sleeve. So I chased my former sleeve pattern as it was. To convert to a bishop sleeve, you split the sleeve up with five vertical lines. You cut from the base of the sleeve up to the top edge where you leave a small part to act as a hinge. Then you spread the bottom open, spreading the back slightly more than the front, trace around this on a fresh piece of paper and mark all your notches, grain lines and label it. Then you finally add your seam allowance. For the cuff, it is a simple rectangle. I measured my forearm circumference at where I wanted my sleeve to end, added a one centimetre seam allowance either side. This got me the width of the rectangle. I then did double the cuff depth I wanted, plus one centimetre seam allowance either side. I added this to my previous toil and I adored the sleeve. The volume was just what I wanted and the length great, but it confirmed my theory that the shoulders would not stay up. I have a really small upper back and struggle with this a lot. Now a simple fix would be to add a bow across or maybe some elastic in the shoulder, but I didn't want the fuss. To redraft the back, I retraced the original back piece and kept it as one section. So I marked the shoulder front shape, then I carried on this as a smooth curve to the back, added the fold and then the one centimetre seam allowance around the edge. My new design now looks like this. Happy with the bodice and sleeve, I now worked on the skirt. The skirt is a fairly simple design so I didn't need to create a towel. It's a circle skirt, so taking my waist measurement of 67 centimetres, I did some maths and found that I needed a quarter circle with a radius of 10.6 centimetres. I then added a length of 45 centimetres from this point. For the base tier, I measured the hem, which would be multiplied by four. This would be the minimum distance I needed my tier to be. I want some gather, so I will do it larger. The tier will be a straightforward rectangle that is the full width of my fabric and I will be using three of them to create it. The waistband is another rectangle, measuring double the depth that I want, plus seam allowance either side. The length is my waist measurement, plus one centimetre ease and 2.5 centimetre overlap. I then added my one centimetre seam allowance either side. Pattern complete, I cut the main fabric, paying attention to all the grey lines. I had three meters in total and on completion, I was left with 20 centimeters. For the lining, I cut the bodice pieces and the circle skirt part. This will stop it being see-through. The final piece I cut was interfacing for the cuffs.
I started by sewing the bodice from princess seams. I like to do this first as they require accurate sewing to ensure no gathers or tucks. I then clipped the seam allowance and pressed them open using a ham to find a curve similar to my body curves. Next, I sewed the back darts and pressed these towards the side seams. I attached the front to the back at the shoulders and the side seams. I selected the side I wanted my zipper to be located and for this side I only sewed the first 10 centimeters under the armpit. This is to allow me to insert my sleeve later. All seams were pressed open and I used an overlocker on raw edges to prevent fraying. To construct the sleeves, the first step was to first sew up the underarm seam. I like to pin these side by side in a mirror fashion to ensure I have a left and a right, or I commonly end up with raw edges on the outer side of the garment that I need to create later. Now my sleeves formed around, I used the longest stitch length on my machine to sew two gathering stitches between the notches on the top edge and around the bottom edge. The cuff was pressed in half and then had interfacing applied to one side. The short edges were sewn together to form a loop, pressed open, then the sleeve was gathered in to fit the cuff and pinned in place. When pinned, I made sure to match the seams and the centre notch so everything was evenly distributed around the sleeve. With the outer side sewn, I turned the cuff back, folding under the seam allowance and then hand stitched this in place. With both sleeves fully constructed, I now inserted them into my bodice. When you do this, be sure to check your notches are correctly aligned. The double notch always goes at the back of the garment. I constructed the lining bodice in the exact same manner as the main fabric without the sleeves. To create a neat neckline, 
I place them right sides together and pin them along the neckline, around each shoulder and across the back neck. I matched every seam line and notch carefully. I sewed this at my machine, clipped the curves and understitched all the way round. Understitching prevents your fabric from turning to the outside during wear. It gives you a lovely neat finish. Finally, a press makes the edges sharp. Inserting the invisible zipper under the arm came next. I have a tutorial showing this technique in detail which I will link to in the description and leave a card above. You'll note here that I inserted the zipper with the opening side at the waist edge. Final step to complete the top garment was to fold under the seam allowance of the lining and attach it to the main fabric. It was needed at the sleeves, along the zipper and at the hem. This was all done by hand using my dress form to make sure I had no tension. The lining will usually stick out at the arms more than the main fabric due to the turn at the front edge being inside. This is normal and it gives you more fabric to work with to get everything tucked inside. The first step on the skirt was to attach the pockets to the side seams. This required me using two separate pocket techniques. First, the harder of the two, an inseam pocket with an invisible zipper. This involves constructing the full pocket on one side so that you can then join it to the back panel with a zipper between. The second is an inseam pocket. Here you place a pocket on both panels and then join them together from top to bottom. I won't speak too much on either as you will find links to tutorials for both of these in the description along with cards above. There I speak in depth on how to accomplish both techniques and that includes how to insert the zipper too. This is the moment I join the two panels together. Say hello to my helpful dog, come in to lend a paw and be judgmental.
skirt lining was put together with a single straight seam on one side. This was aligned with the main skirt and sewn together at the waistland. The waistband will now sandwich this top edge hiding all the raw edges. The first step was to press it in half and interface one side. It is then flipped right sides together, facing one another and the edges are sewn. One side has an overlap and for this we sew in by 2.5cm too. You can do this after if you prefer, it's really up to you. Attach this to the skirt waistline starting from the zipper on the back panel. You want the overlap to be positioned on the front zipper edge as then it looks flush from the front. Match all notches to get it evenly spread and sew to the front of the waistband only. As we did with the cuff, tuck the raw edge in the middle of the waistband and hand stitch in place. For the bottom tier, sew together your three long rectangles that are the width of our fabric into a continuous loop. Next, hem it by using your iron to press under the bottom edge by one centimetre. Go all the way around, pin it in place, then go all the way around a second time, turning it under another one centimetre. Stitch this down one centimetre from the edge, making sure your bobbin is pretty full before you start. Before attaching the tear to the circle skirt, it's important to hang up your skirt for at least 24 hours and allow the bottom edge to drop and level off. Measure it after this time period and even it up before going to the next step. To attach the two parts, place the circle skirt flat on a surface. Evenly distribute the tear fabric around the edge. You can use a gathering thread if you prefer, or just pin it by sight as I am doing here, placing a pin in the middle of each gap. Sew around with a one centimeter seam allowance, and then complete on your overlocker. This was the point I had a disaster, and my thread tension went crazy on my machine. I had to unpick the entire tear and redo it all. It took forever. Don't get upset if sewing doesn't go to plan. Just go back a step and repeat, it happens. So this is my final look. I have a cropped princess seam blouse with three quarter bishop sleeves and a cuff. I have a full skirt with a gathered tear and a waistband. Both garments fastened with an invisible zip on the side. If you have enjoyed watching and would like to see more, please like and subscribe. I will be adding more tutorials to the channel in the coming months featuring some of the techniques featured here. And do check out the cards seen during my video to see the ones already online. If you give the garment a go, please do comment and link to your video. I would love to see the end results. Happy sewing.